Today we're going to learn how to simplify radicals with variables. So we're going to look at a few examples here. First example, we have a square root of 50, and then there's also an x to the 8th. Now, if you simplified radicals and square roots before, you'll know that the square root of 50 does not come out to be a whole number. So we have to split that into pieces that do come out nicely. So the square root of 50 can be factored as 25 and 2. So when we square root 25, we get something very nice. We get 5. When we square root 2, we get, well, something very ugly, right? That ends up giving you like 1.41 dot, 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 dot. And it goes on forever. So we're going to leave the ugly decimals as square roots. So we're going to just leave it as 5 square root 2. But we also have x's. Now, when we have x to the 8th, I want to remember that the exponents do something here. I end up having to take out as many sets of 2 as I can. And I can do that by dividing the exponent by 2. So we can think of it as x to the 8 divided by 2. Well, 8 divided by 2 equals 4. So I can go ahead and take out x to the 4th. So my answer is actually... For the square root of 50x to the 8th, it can be written as 5x to the 4th power, because I divided the exponent by 2, and I can leave that square root of 2 in there that I couldn't take out. Okay, This feels weird if you haven't done square roots before, but I encourage you to just practice a little bit, because it's not, it's not that hard of a skill to learn. It's just a little bit different. We like everything to come out nice in just a whole number, but that's not how this works today. In our second example, we have square root of 45, w to the 7th. Now, 45, if I squared it, it doesn't come out nicely, but I can split it into something that does. So I can come into something nicely. Well, I've got 9 times 5. The square root of 9 and the square root of 5, I can do th those. So I'm splitting that apart and square rooting the factors separately. The square root of 9 is 3. And the square root of 5 is uh, just square root of 5 as far as I know. It doesn't come out nicely. It's like 2 point something ugly. Now when we look at the w to the 7th, we want to divide that exponent by 2. But the catch is even that comes out to a decimal because 7 doesn't go evenly. 2 doesn't go evenly into 7. That would give us something like 3 and 1 half. Okay, which means we can only take out three pairs. And then we have an extra W that we couldn't take out. So if we had to, let's say we were going on a ride and we're on this roller coaster and there are seven friends are with us. And so it's seven people, but the roller coaster, each car only holds two people. That means we can get three cars three cars would fit two people each. But then one car would only be half full because we'd have an extra odd number of people. And that's why we end up having to leave one W on the inside. It feels like a lot, but that's why we want to think about this just as the numbers and the variables separately. So when we look at example three, again, square root of 27 doesn't come out nicely. But 9 does come out nicely. So I'm pulling apart. I know that the square root of 9 is 3, and the square root of 3 is ugly. The y is all by itself. So when we go to divide it by 2, how many pairs of y's do we have? Well, we don't have any pairs. We can't take out any of them. So we just leave that lonely y inside the square root because it doesn't it doesn't pair up in this example we've already got a six out here okay but we're going to deal with the 18 on the inside and we're going to try to get something that pairs up nicely uh i know i can take a two out of that but two doesn't square root nicely is there a number that squares nicely again we have a nine that square roots nicely a nine and a two and if I square root 9, I get 3. But if I square root 2, I get, well, square root of 2. I get something ugly, right? 
I can look at my variables and I say, well, I've got two of them there. So can they pair up? And the answer is yes. So we're going to pull those to the outside as just a single X. And on top of that, we have a six that we already had there. So on the inside, we just have a square root of two. But on the outside, we have to clean this up and put this in order. What's six times X times three? That's going to be 18 X. So that worked out actually kind of interesting because we ended up having to multiply two numbers on the outside because we had to multiply by the one that was already there. About as complicated as it could get would be to have numbers on the inside, have numbers on the outside, and have variables. But what if we had two variables, two different variables? So we're going to just deal with them one piece at a time. The 3 is going to be out there. We, we talked about how the 3 just stays out there. The square root of 50, well, that's going to be the 25 and 2. And so the square root of 25 is 5, and so that's going on the outside. But the square root of 2 is square root of 2, so that's going to be left on the inside. Then we have f's. So when we look at f's, we have f to the 10th power. But if we divide that by 2, how many pairs do we have? Well, we have f to the 5th. And our last number is actually g to the 9th. And so g to the ninth, how many pairs do we have? Well, we only have four pairs, so four and a half. If we divide nine by two, we get four and a half. So we're going to have g to the fourth, and then we're going to have one more g left on the inside. If we were to clean this all up and make sure it's nice and pretty, we'd end up with 15 f to the fifth, g to the fourth, square root of 2g. Simplifying radical expressions with variables takes practice. It's going to feel awkward. The key thing to think about as we work through is to think about numbers and each variable separately.